Chris Arnold, I practice orthopedic surgery at Advanced Orthopedic Sports Medicine, and I'm going to talk about ACLs today. Cause ACL tears. Um, one is the muscles, and we know that, that certain people have, are more prone to tear their ACLs, usually females, if there's a, a mis a, 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 Misbal or mismatch between the strength of their quadriceps and their hamstrings. We know that um, people have stronger quadriceps and weaker hamstrings are more prone to tear their ACLs. So we want to have a nice, um, a nice um, balance between the two of those. The other thing is just the mobility. It's real important to have good, um, good actually flexibility between the quad, the quads and the hamstrings, as well as the IT band. And I think it's real important that we have a good um, stretching program for that as well. So strengthening, stretching. And also um, shoe wear. You know, I think that shoe wear can make a big difference. We know that, it, and especially in women, the basketball players, um, you want to have a uh, component that's not too, that's not, that is forgiving to some degree. So that when I go on that new fresh court with that new shoe, something has to give. A lot of times, the knee. Hi, I'm Coach Hunsucker from Springdale High School with the Lady Bulldog basketball team. I would like to know what machine or exercise is worse for the players' knees. Is what I think for years, and we don't see it that much in gyms anymore, is the leg extensions. That's when you sit and your leg, your your your, cat or your uh, shin is actually um, pressed up against one of the bars and you straighten your leg out. Um, it's called a knee extension machine. Um, it's, we call it an open chain. And the hamstring, the reason it's so bad is your, your quadriceps are firing. The hamstrings aren't firing, so they don't have that protective effect on the knee. And all that force goes across the kneecap. And... Um, I think that can really tear up somebody's kneecap or patella very quickly. So close behind that is a, is a squat or a lunge that's done inappropriate and correctly. If you do a squat and the knees actually come in front of the, of the uh, toes, and that puts all that pressure across your kneecap and it's real, real easy to tear up the kneecap. Hi, I'm Lauren Phillips with Heritage Girls Basketball, and I want to know why girls are more likely to tear their ACLs. Males more likely to tear their ACL. You know, it's interesting because in our literature, <clears throat> females that play soccer and volleyball and basketball, anywhere from six to eight to some people say ten times more likely to tear their ACL than, than men. And we don't really know what the, the main issue is. Um, I've written some articles on it. I think it has a, has to do with a lot of things. One is the is the is the strength between the quads and the hamstrings being a little different uh, than males. Um, you know, whereas males are 50-50, sometimes females are 60. Forty, you don't have that protective effect. Two is the is if you look at the alignment of the of the leg in the female, they're typically everybody is a little bit knock kneed uh, anatomically, but because the female pelvis is a little bit wider, um, the angle of their knee is a little bit uh, more knock kneed than the male. If you look at where the ACL lives, the intercondylar notch, um, it's actually in females, it's a little bit tighter than in the males, and some people think that that can cause it. I think a lot of it <laughs> has to do with uh, different hormones that women have that men don't, you know, such as estrogen and even relaxin. We wrote an article on this hormone called relaxin, which is a hormone that women have. Men have in very small amounts, so they do have it. And it actually is a ligament that, or it's a hormone that, that relaxes your ligament or ligaments. And, and women, it's, uh, it's high when you're pregnant, and so they can deliver the baby. Uh, but I think that probably has a lot to do with it, and we know that there are relaxin um, receptors on the ACL, so I think that it does affect it to some degree. Those are the biggest things. We're still looking at it because, um, as you know, women are so much more prone to tear their ACLs than men. The conditioning training program, especially for girls basketball, I think it's very, very important. Um, that we have these new programs we actually treat it and we teach in our office. It's a jump training program that teaches it's more suited for women, um, these girls, to how to how to jump, how to land, how your legs should be when they land, how your legs should be when you jump. And I think if you look at it, there's been some good studies across the, the nation. Most of them come out of Cincinnati that show that the jump training program can actually cause a significant decrease in ACL injuries in teams that participated with it um, across, the, across the country. Well, this is Kevin Ramey from Heritage High School. What is the best ACL uh, preventative exercise for, for uh, girls basketball players? Dr. Arnold, uh, with our uh, ACL uh, athletes, whenever they've rehabbed and come back to us, their, their lateral mobility has always been uh, limited. And so what we're interested in is, is how can they maintain or improve uh, lateral movement and explosiveness uh, through their rehab program. Coach Ramey, 
I think the biggest thing is maintaining a nice good balance between your hamstrings and your quads, keeping them strong. But also probably even better than that is um, is uh, this jump training program. Learn how to when you jump and how to land, land it with your legs straight, not knock knee. And there's a whole bunch of different types of uh, exercise we can do to teach you how to do that. Um, Another question from Coach Ramey is that players return from ACL surgery and once released they come back and have limited lateral mobility. How can you rehab and maintain explosiveness and lateral movement? Well, we're taught in our training that uh, once somebody fixes an ACL, they're not supposed to go back to playing sports until six months. We let them typically start running straight ahead of three months, then we don't do much until six months. But if you look at it, and if you look at how the graph gets stronger and stronger as time goes by, um, you can start doing some more lateral movement. You can start doing some individual drills. In our patients, we have a, a program in our office where at the completion of three months, they get into this um, uh, It's a post-hab program where they work out in our gym and we start just doing some running and cutting. Then we start doing some sport-specific drills so that when it gets to the point of five and a half months to six months, um, they can get back to playing sports and, and, the, and it's, they've gotten used to running and cutting so that six months is not the first time that they've, that they've cut. And I think that's a real problem if you take a kid and don't let them cut for six months and then expect them to do it normal, they're not ever going to do that. And so that's the importance of doing all these post-op, post-hab programs that we have at our office. It starts at about three months. The, the final one is about holding squats and what's the best way to do it. You know, I think the squats are good to get the quad strong. Um, the problem is a lot of times these kids, they don't do it the right way. The most important thing, just like we talked before, when you're squatting, you got to make sure you really stick your butt out and keep your, uh, keep your knee. Your knee always needs to be behind your toes. And I don't like to go past 90 degrees. You know, I think if you, if you get your knee in front of your toes or if you go past 90 degrees, I, I think it puts too much pressure on your kneecap, which can cause more problems down the road.